What's up, guys? This is Ray with Biblical Thinking. I'm your host, and we are back with another reaction video. And once again, this video, like the previous one we did with the rapping pastor from the Texas conference, this <laughs> video here, this reaction video is coming back to you once again and sponsored by... Okay, it's not sponsored by, right? But it is once again another video about the Texas conference. Now, we had the the rapping pastor from the Texas conference last week, and I'm sure he was rapping to the youth, right? Now we have another youth event brought to us by, guess who? The Texas conference. Now, once again, we are talking about the Texas conference of Seventh-day Adventists, and the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention, because as I said last week, the majority that are on here on the page are Seventh-day Adventists. And we want to show you not only what's happening in the Christian world in general, but now what's been happening more prevalent in the Seventh-day Adventist church. As we see other denominations are changing and allowing worldliness into their church, now we are finding not that the Seventh-day church as a whole is allowing this stuff to come in, but there are um, several congregations who are acting like Congregationalist Church, where they do not adhere to the beliefs of the denomination as a whole. They're taking the the laws, if you want to say, into their own hands and just doing as they will, and which is what's happening in other denominations as well. And this is why we see splits and multiple churches leaving different denominations is because the denomination itself does not approve of what they're doing biblically uh, or non-biblically, so they split. Well, now this is happening in the Seventh-day Adventist church, just more and more and more here in North America. And as I said last week, it's sad that it happens more towards the youth and it's more geared towards the youth. But that's with any type of indoctrination that happens in regards to our society, right? Where do we see a lot of indoctrination happening with our youth? Even in our own country, it's always at the college and high school level, mainly at the college level, but they always go after the youth, right? To indoctrinate the next generation. Well, this is what's happening here in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It's hitting the youth and it's been hitting the youth for many years, but it's really been ramping up since about uh, the mid 2000s and it's just being ever so much increasing now to the point where it's not new anymore and it's not shocking because we're seeing it more and more and nothing's being done about it so this reaction video once again like i said is coming from the texas conference of seven day Adventists, and it's not just uh, a youth uh, event it's one of the biggest youth events uh, in the seven day Adventist church per conference okay uh, inside the Seventh Day Adventist Church, we have clubs for kids, and one of the clubs is known as Pathfinders. You know, it's similar to your Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts type deal. So, uh, we teach them uh, during Pathfinders not only survival skills and stuff like that, but how to grow in a relationship with Christ and how to help others, right? And how to be uh, a, a beneficial person not only for society but for God, right? To help other people, help uh, to know uh, certain things just to get you through life. There's a variety of things that Pathfinders does. And Pathfinders is more to your, your young teen to your teenage years. Uh, say middle school, high school, that's the age group for Pathfinders. And then there's another group lower level than that. Well, every year, every conference has... Um, a local for their own conference, a Pathfinder group event. And it just so happens in 2023, this past April, the Texas conference had in Texas um, um, an event for the Pathfinders. Now the video that I'm gonna about to show you or that I am about to show you comes from that uh, Pathfinder event. Now, these are Pathfinders from around the Texas Conference. So there's a lot of churches and a lot of people in the Texas Conference. It's basically the whole state, of, almost the whole state of Texas. West Texas belongs to the New Mexico Texas Conference, which is called Texaco. But the rest of the Texas belongs to the Texas Conference. And I'm not sure if they branch off into another state, but Texas is huge on their own. So they have a lot of people and I'm sure they have a lot of kids. 
And here we have uh, a, a big event for Texas Conference to where it's their local Pathfinder event. And I'm sure not only uh, local Pathfinder kids were there, I'm sure maybe other kids from nearby conferences are there as well. You never know, right? And it's just not for kids. There's adults that go to these things too. Obviously, parents go with their kids, right? Um, but yeah, anyone is welcome as far as I, my knowledge is concerned. So here we go. The Texas Conference is now having a youth event which happened this past april um the pathfinder um campery there you can see it there it says uh excuse me for looking away it's just i can't read on my screen because it's backwards but it says stand out pathfinder campery april 6th through 9th 2023 texas conference 2023 that's what that graphic in the back says. Now, before I play the video, I want you to pay attention to some things. Now, our job as Christians is to uh, call out people, right? And not call them out like call out their sins or call out what they're doing bad. It's calling them out. The Bible says calling them out of Babylon, right? So our job as Christians is not to judge people, but yet our job as Christians is to show them the truth as it's found in Jesus. Now, sometimes that may mean that people need to hear hard truths, but the majority of the time, we're just showing them what the Bible says about Jesus. That's what we're called to do. But yet here, what we find is many conference events with the leaders at, at the heads of these conferences, right? The way they want to show the youth Jesus is through entertainment, not through scripture, not through uh, the means in, in uh, like say mission work or some, some actually do do that. They do mission work every year, but they take these events in a playful manner to a point where it's just about entertaining now some may say well ray you don't understand and you you haven't uh you haven't really been to these things and and that's that's true i haven't been to the big big ones and i do understand with kids it can be all study 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 there has to be some time where they can de-stress right and like recess right i i get that and i get the fun aspect of these events as well and i also get what we're about to see because I've seen it many different places. And what we're about to see is not exactly a seven day Adventist thing. It's something that came out of the Catholic church and then actually moved into more the non-denominational churches. And then it exploded with them because they have uh, in the non-denominational ch churches, they have a lot of youth and they also have these paid professional youth leaders uh, who are paid to do anything possible to entertain the youth, right? And make it seem like it's for Jesus. Now, the thing I understand about these types of things is they're stepping stones for people with Christ. I mean, who knows? There could be people here who this is the first time they're seeing Christ, or maybe this is going to move them to accept Christ. Now, the problem I have with that and what you're about to see is these types of things. And we talked about... um the last time when I talked about the rapping pastor, we talked about that job that I saw here in Albuquerque at a mega church that implied or that was hiring for a youth, uh, a youth, um, uh, ministry pastor. It's not a youth, uh, the, the worship leader pastor, right? The songs and things like that. And they didn't have to know anything about the Bible. All they had to do is have a degree in musical theory because they have to know how to use music to entice people and get their emotions driven, right? It's the same thing with these events. And what you're going to see is that this video, it does the exact same thing. Music is being used to entice an emotion to create possibly a decision for someone. The saddest thing about that is while we may say praise the Lord, maybe a youth at this event, because of what we're about to see, may have changed his mind and wanted to maybe be baptized or changed his mind saying, I want to follow Jesus. That's great. And I hope that if there's anyone there or if any of you are watching this and you decide to do it, I hope you follow up with that intention and continue moving forward. The saddest result that we do see, though, when it comes to this sort of uh, showing people Jesus through this manner, through these types of entertainment, what we see is it's it's not it's not genuine. Why is it not genuine? Because those that are experiencing this type of transformation through this type of entertainment that we're about to see, it's only feelings based. 
And the Bible never talks about conversion as feelings based. It's a thought this th that that God creates in the mind with you when you fully see and get to know Jesus truly and make a, a rational decision to follow Christ and to do everything possible to do your best to follow him day by day, right? That's why Paul says he dies daily. It's a conscience effort every single day to want to follow Jesus. But you don't have a conscience effort through feelings every single day because feelings come and go. This is why the majority of youth in these events actually don't come to church that often or don't stay as long. Or even if they stay, they have no idea who Jesus truly is. And they've never had that conversion experience because all it was was entertainment and feelings. There was never any meat of of who Jesus is and what he does and what he wants to do through you and how he wants to change his life. No, it's be the same. Have fun with this music. Have fun here at church and do whatever you want. And not, nobody changes because this is the type of events that a lot of non-denominational and other charismatic churches actually want to give. They want to give entertainment and because they know t TV and music, that's their their uh their biggest avenue or their biggest uh uh challenge and they want to be able to go against that so instead of going against it and telling people well don't stay home they tell them no come to church and we'll just give you what you want anyway right and this is what's happening happening in the seven day Adventist church and here and this very in this small little portion of the event you're going to see the video excuse me it's a skit of um the youth uh not sure what age group but they're youth that are there and they're doing a skit that's normal that we've been seeing for years it's a skit about uh the the battle between christ and Satan over you and how that there's different things in life that satan throws at you uh in order to keep you away from god but no matter what you go through jesus is always there trying to fight for you now this skit is reality it's telling you exactly what is happening in what we call the great controversy it is true what this thing is teaching but in reality while it's teaching the truth it's engulfed engulfed in the 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 entertainment of the world to where it doesn't allow you to contemplate exactly what's happening because you're so focused on the music you're so focused on the lights that those things take a hypnotic form upon you and your emotions just flow and you're not able to understand what exactly is happening although you will see what is happening right you can understand what's happening but you wouldn't be able to make a life-changing experience because your emotions are so driven because as you see this video the music rises the music lowers it sets a pace for each act and event that's happening it's just like a movie that's what it's doing and then in the crescendo at the end the music gets louder 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 to where we're in a full engaged rock concert while the ending is happening to where jesus saves the person yes i just ruined the ending for you but you probably all see this anyway but the focus here is not so much jesus saving the the person it's the music in the background and while many people will not admit that it's the music that's driving their emotion driving them to scream or to clap it's it's the reality of the matter this is why music, this is why is used in commercials and in TV uh, movies is because music has that effect. Imagine watching a movie without any music. You probably would stop watching that movie within the first five minutes. Or just think about a commercial. Commercials only last like 30 seconds, most, most of them, right? Millions of dollars are paid at a Super Bowl for a commercial for like 30 seconds, right? But within that 30 seconds, it's just not people talking. There's music involved in that. Why? Because music hooks the emotions. Music hooks the person. Music hooks the, the functions in the body to where it creates the synaptis in your brain to where music creates a stamp in your mind to where whenever you see that commercial or something that reminds you of it, click your mind brings it back up because it's emotionally attached with music. And this is what's transpiring here. 
So this is um, a skit done. As I said, the great controversy, if you want to call it that, that's what we as Adventists call it, um, where Satan and the devil are fighting uh, for us as humanity and Satan's using his demons to bring back the person back to him through various manners of things and you'll see it here in the video i hope it's clear but like i said most of you have seen it before and even after this i'll post this short clip on on the page as well so that way you could just see the video in clarity in entirety rather than only watching it through this so i'll go ahead and do that just like i did with the last video okay so here it is we're gonna play and i have to multitask here uh, with uh, with several computers, so bear with me. Now be seated. So here it is. I'm super excited for this weekend. So there you go. There's Jesus and Pete puts you in the place of the girl, right? He's dancing with you. And like I said, this can seem completely innocent. But it's an emotion-driven gospel. And it just fades. It never lasts. So Jesus is giving her gifts. Kind of insinuating a new creation in life, right? You could call her Eve if you want. She's excited. Jesus is showing her his creation. That's why I said you could say she's Eve. There's a demon trying to pull her away, or that could be Satan. He's charming her with flowers. Next one comes trying to charm her with money. I have to look off to see exactly what's the next theme. It's a shorter version, but now uh, the demons are trying to push her back and keep her in her sin. See how the music gets loud? It's basically a rock band, right? And Jesus is fighting for her while the demons are trying to hold her back. And she finally breaks free of the demons. Like I said, this is a shorter version. There goes the fireworks. Now she's saved. Now she's happy and dancing with Jesus in newness of life with the rock concert in the background and the flames and smoke, all the graffiti in the background, with all the drums and all the instruments in the background. There are her friends congratulating her. Now they're all going to pray together because she now has victory. Pathfinders, you may now be seated. Okay. I'm super excited for this weekend. Let me turn that off there. <laughs> it went into another video. <laughs> okay, that sometimes happens in live TV, right? You can still hear it in the background being played. Okay, so that happens, right? <laughs> I'm not going to edit this thing. I'm just doing it live. So this is what's happening, right? And did you notice? I, mean, I know I was talking through the thing. But you can notice in the background that the background is all graffiti. And you notice that in the style of, uh, I guess if you want to call it the main theme as we uh, saw in the beginning uh, for the Texas conference. It was a graffiti theme. And I'm not against graffiti. I love graffiti. I I can't do it. I've never I never had that talent. But I mean, come on. What type of lifestyle does graffiti uh, tell us a person who's involved in it? What type of lifestyle they live, right? So we're trying to engage with the youth with a graffiti themed, and one would say. Okay, well, we're trying to meet the youth where they're at. And that's all well and good, but that's not how you meet people where they're at. 
where you meet people where they're at is the current condition and where they're at and bring them up, right? You find a way to bring them up, not help them stay where they're at. And, you know, they use this understanding that, that the Bible talks about Paul when he was, like, say, with the Greeks, he became like a Greek. When he was with the Jew, he became like a Jew. And that doesn't mean that when Paul came to a new area that he actually engaged in the practices of the people that he was trying to convert, right? What if he came into Rome and all of a sudden they were having these orgies? Would Paul actually partake in one, right? If I were to try and uh, get an alcoholic to convert and get to know Jesus and make his life better, would I tell him, okay, our first meeting is at a bar? Would I do that to him? No, obviously not. So why would you make a youth event uh, surrounded by the music of the world, even though it's supposedly a Christian song, but it's still the music of the world, the entertainment of the world, the, the practices of the entertainment of the world, a theme that has the background theme of a lifestyle of crime, right? Because where's graffiti at? It's done in people's property, which is a crime. It's also done in, in public property, which also is a crime, right? And it's usually a gang marking symbol. That's what graffiti is originally for. So we have all these aspects of the world that the youth should not be involved in. And instead of trying to get them out of that atmosphere, we are now bringing it into young youth events in our church and trying to say, OK, we understand you, youth. We understand that this is what you want. You want a life of crime. You want a life of ganghood because this is what we're displaying here in our events. You want a life of worldly music and popular and entertainment. You want a life of entertainment through movies and all that comes with that lifestyle. So this is what we're going to give you. And we're going to throw a little bit of a dash of Christianity in there just to make you ha uh, feel and believe that you were having a spiritual event here at this place, yet that little peppered uh, sprinkle of Christianity that we threw in there to make you happy is all overlaid with worldliness. What are these people doing? What are they thinking? Yet this is the mentality of those who are in charge of uh, the spiritual well-being of our youth in our churches. These are the people who are in charge of that, and yet they're not leading our children down the path of accepting Christ. They're actually leading our children back or through the path of rejecting Christ. And they think that this is right. They think that this is biblical. Well, I'm sorry, but it's not. You know, but we they have this mentality of wanting to become more and more like Sunday churches because they see all these kids there. They see these churches filled with, with uh, thousands of people, and this is what they want. But yet this is not what the churches were founded upon, especially in our denomination. Our job is to spread and take the message everywhere not to come together to make houses of worship that are filled with thousands of people that only glorify the pastor of the church. No, that's not what we're called to do. And that is not what a Seventh-day Adventist believes. And that's not what the church as a whole believes either. But yet we're having some rogue conferences and some rogue churches and some rogue individuals that are at in certain positions. And yet this is the style of false worship and of false um, teachings of the Bible that they want to bring to our youth and parents are allowing this stuff. And more than likely, the parents actually probably agree with this stuff because they have no more of a relationship with Jesus than what their kids do because they probably were never taught uh, anything about the Bible. And I've been in these churches. I've worked in these churches before where I came in and I've seen congregations where at least 75% of them were just newly baptized. And yet when we ask them questions about the Bible, they know absolutely nothing. 
well, why were you baptized into this church if you know absolutely nothing about the Bible or if you only know three or four things? Because they were told that this is the model that the church is doing is because they want numbers rather than quality of people. They want people to just be here to fill up a space rather than uh, quality people who take time to get to know Jesus and want a relationship with him. That is the model. And this is where it's going for. And yes, it's not out there in the open, but this is what I've been told by pastors. This is what I've been told by congregations and leaders of these congregations, that this is what these conferences want. And this is the result. Why? I do not get it. I mean, it's simple to understand. I just don't get it how honest people in leadership in our churches at even some of the highest level center conference or divisions how they could allow and actually mandate this type of nonsense because this is the direction that they want our church to go into and what is the first thing they do they infect our youth with this and they say the youth want it no it's not the youth that want it it's you as a leader who have convinced them that this is what they need when in reality they're leaving the church because you're showing them nonsense that they could get at any other church instead of showing them Jesus and then you wonder why they leave. They're teaching our kids an emotional based Christianity that simply does not last rather than a true gospel salvational one-on-one -on -one relationship with jesus that's what they should be teaching them but they're not and they're gonna see the result even more and more as more kids leave and then eventually what's probably going to happen because we tend to repeat history when we don't read it or or understand it we see all these other denominations where they're being fractured because many of the churches want to become their own independent and believe outside of what the actual denomination is teaching and they fracture and they go be and they go and become their own non-denominational churches right i think eventually it's going to happen the seven day adventist church matter of fact we're told that it's going to happen and it's going to happen soon and because nobody at any higher levels is stopping this from happening, it's going to happen. The saddest thing is that it's possible that there are parents out there who are sending their kids to these classes at these churches, to these youth adult meetings at these churches and conferences, and maybe they believe and have a saving relationship with shape relationship with Christ and they send these their kids to these events thinking that they're going to be safe and maybe they maybe they may be safe physically but spiritually they're being indoctrinated by demons and devils and the parents may not even know it and then the parents wonder well, what happened to my kid yeah, it's because they let them go to these types of events and maybe they didn't uh, teach them enough so they can guard themselves from these types of deceptions. That's what they are, they're deceptions. And sad to say, these deceptions are happening where I'm at as well. But to think that they're happening right next door as well, it's like you feel surrounded all over. These things are happening all around you. And really you can only do so much but our job is just to share with Jesus. And yes, at times, some of us, so a few of us, there's not many, bring out these particular things, not to condemn anyone, but we bring these out to help other people to share the truth of what's happening out there. Because if we wouldn't say anything, nobody would know. But yet, it's happening. People are making it happen on purpose. And it's up to us, the watchers, as the Bible calls them, the watchers on the wall, to shout and blow the horn to let people know that the enemy is coming and the enemy is here. And this enemy that I'm saying is not these people at the Texas conference. 
the enemy is not the youth involved. The enemy is Satan and his angels. It's just the saddest thing is they have many people confused into thinking that what they're doing, like what we saw here in this video, is true Christianity. But it's not. It's a deception. And we need to pray for these people that one day that they will see the true light and they will leave this nonsense, find their way back to God, ask for repentance, and become a great missionary for Him wherever it is that they are. Because this stuff is big, it's happening, it's infectious, it seems like it's good, but my friends, it's not. And it's definitely not biblical. Well, friends, this is Ray, and that's my reaction video to the Texas Pathfinder Campery video of this so-called heavenly skit that is deceiving the youth and many adults now in the Seventh-day Adventist Church and now in Texas. All right, friends. Well, good night, good day. Have a good week whenever it is that you watch, watch this. I hope you're blessed. Sorry for a little bit of my mistakes, but... I can't edit, so we're going to leave those in. But I hope you learned something. I hope you share this with other people. Read your Bibles even more. Stay strong in the Word. Read it daily and increase your relationship with Jesus. And tell others about His soon coming, which is all we can do. Well, friends, have a good one. We'll see you in the next video. God bless.